My name's Richard Nicholson, I'm a photographer. I currently have a show at Rifle Maker Gallery in central London, and it's an exhibition of a project I started in 2006. It's called Last One Out, and it's a survey of the last remaining professional dark rooms in London. This space here, where we are today, Photo Fusion, it's a higher dark room and it's where I've always printed. Ten years ago this place was totally overbooked, it was full of photographers, printing mainly uh, fashion portraiture for, for glossy magazines, magazines like ID or Vogue, Days and Confused, there were, there were a whole bunch of photographers here. Come 2006 it was very solitary and one day I was printing here um, you know there's room for about eight people to print but it was just me on my own and that's when I started looking at the enlarger in a new light previously it had just been a, a tool um, but thinking about how film photography was under threat uh, suddenly the enlarger struck me as being a, an interesting machine they have a, an almost a, a sort of human form, or, 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 or maybe some of them look like robots, but uh, an enlarger generally has a neck, it has a head, some of them have a pair of feet, and they have these two focusing handles. And so I became interested in the way a printer interacts with these machines. Each of these images was photographed in total darkness. One of the things that in, has interested me is that you're blind in a dark room, it's totally black. You can't see the hand, your hands in front of your face. And uh, so somehow I like the idea of mirroring that experience when I was actually taking the pictures. It's tricky because you have to, you're walking around with this light. Uh, the flashlight, so it's, it's, it's not on until you press the button. Uh, you get a burst of flash. As you move around, you've got to be very careful not to kick the, kick the tripod and nudge the camera. And I like that feeling that when I was taking these pictures, it felt to me the same as when I'm printing in the dark room. I decided to photograph professional dark rooms rather than amateurs' dark rooms because I was really interested in capturing the sort of pure essence of photographic printing. These are the rooms where the serious work gets done. This picture is my favourite image from the series. It's a dark room belonging to a printer called Roy Snell and it's in the uh, basement of a Victorian terraced house in South London. Compositionally I find it very satisfying, the two enlargers mirroring each other and then all these boxes of different types of photographic paper. And then there are the strange objects, there's a wooden parrot behind one enlarger, it's this clay boot with a, with a quill in it. This is uh, Peter Guest's dark room, and I love it for that notice board on the left, which is just covered in family snapshots. And I also like this uh, bicycle horn uh, screwed to the wall. Uh, Peter's a, a keen cyclist. He was wearing latex cycling shorts when I when I visited him. Also, there's a detail: the radio was playing, and I, I like the way um, it's, it's captured the. BBC Radio 1, uh, 7.20 p.m., 13th of December, 2006. 
I photographed about 35 darkrooms. I think about 20 of those have closed, and there, there are probably about 15 operational professional darkrooms left in London. The sad thing is these printers aren't really busy enough to be able to afford to hire assistants. So whilst you can get good, fine printing done now, I think it's questionable whether those skills will be passed on to anyone in the future. I think these images have proved popular because they speak of a, a past time when craft skills were uh, really valued. And I think we live in a very fast moving world now where manual craft has been neglected. You know, as a working photographer, 2006 was the time where I really had to make a decision where I had to switch to digital. So this project is my last, last encounter with film.